Iran Air Flight 655 was a scheduled passenger flight from Tehran to Dubai via Bandar Abbas that was shot down on 3 July 1988 by an SM-2 surface-to-air missile fired from USS Vincennes, a guided missile cruiser of the United States Navy. The aircraft, an Airbus A300, was destroyed and all 290 people on board were killed. The incident occurred during the final stages of the Iran-Iraq War, which had been continuing for nearly eight years. Background In 1984, the war between Iraq and Iran had expanded to include air attacks against oil tankers and merchant shipping of neighboring countries, some of whom were providing aid to Iraq by shipping Iraqi oil. The Flight 655 incident occurred a year after the Iraqi Air Force attack on the U.S. Navy-guided missile frigate USS Stark on 17 May 1987, which killed 37 American sailors. U.S. naval forces had also exchanged gunfire with Iranian gunboats in late 1987, and the guided missile frigate USS Samuel B. Roberts had struck an Iranian sea mine in April 1988. Two months before the incident, the U.S. had engaged in Operation Praying Mantis, resulting in the sinkings of the Iranian frigate Sahand, the Iranian fast attack craft Joshin and three Iranian speedboats. Also, the Iranian frigate Sabalan was crippled, two Iranian platforms were destroyed and an Iranian fighter was damaged. A total of at least 56 Iranian crew were killed, while the U.S. suffered the loss of only one helicopter which crashed apparently by accident, and its two pilots were killed. Tensions were therefore high in the Strait of Hormuz at the time of the incident with Flight 655. In response to the pattern of attacks on shipping, the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff issued a notum on 8 September 1987, warning all Persian Gulf countries that civilian aircraft must monitor the 121.5 MHz VHF International Air Distress or the 243.0 MHz UHF military air distress frequencies and be prepared to identify themselves to U.S. Navy ships and state their intentions. On 29 April 1988, the U.S. expanded the scope of its Navy's protection to all friendly neutral shipping in the Persian Gulf outside declared exclusion zones, which set the stage for the shootdown. At about the same time, Vincennes was rushed to the area on a short-notice deployment, as a result of high-level decisions, to compensate for the lack of AWACS coverage, which was hampering U.S. monitoring of the southern Persian Gulf. Vincennes, fitted with the then new Aegis combat system and under the command of Captain William C. Rogers III, departed San Diego on 25 April 1988, and arrived in Bahrain on 29 May 1988. As the Strait of Hormuz at its narrowest is 21 nautical miles wide, in order to traverse the strait, ships must stay within sea lanes that pass through the territorial waters of Iran and Oman under the transit passage provisions of customary law of the sea. It is therefore normal for ships, including warships, entering or leaving the Persian Gulf to transit Iranian territorial waters. During the Iran-Iraq War the Iranian forces frequently boarded and inspected neutral cargo ships in the Strait of Hormuz in search of contraband destined for Iraq. While legal under international law, these inspections added to the tensions in the area. The shoot down The plane, an Airbus A300 flown by 37-year-old Captain Mohsen Razayan, a veteran pilot with 7,000 hours of flight time, left Bandar Abbas at 10.17 Iran time, 27 minutes after its scheduled departure time. It should have been a 28-minute flight. After takeoff, it was directed by the Bandar Abbas tower to turn on its transponder and proceed over the Persian Gulf. The flight was assigned routinely to Commercial Air Corridor Amber 59, a 20-mile wide lane on a direct line to Dubai Airport. The short distance made for a simple flight pattern, climb to 14,000 feet, cruise, and descend into Dubai. The airliner was transmitting the correct transponder score code typical of a civilian aircraft and maintained radio contact in English with appropriate air traffic control facilities.
On the morning of the 3rd of July 1988, USS Vincennes was passing through the Strait of Hormuz returning from an escort duty. A helicopter deployed from the cruiser reportedly received small arms fire from Iranian patrol vessels as it observed from high altitude. Vincennes moved to engage the Iranian vessels, in the course of which they all violated Omani waters and left after being challenged and ordered to leave by a Royal Navy of Oman warship. Vincennes then pursued the Iranian gunboats, entering Iranian territorial waters to open fire. At the time the missiles were launched, the Vincennes was within the 12-mile limit of Iranian territorial seas. The location of Vincennes in Iranian territorial waters at the time of the incident was admitted by the U.S. government in legal briefs and publicly by Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral William J. Crow, on Nightline. Two other U.S. Navy ships, USS Sides and USS Elma Montgomery, were nearby. Admiral Crow denied a U.S. government cover-up of the incident and said the cruiser's helicopter was over international waters when the gunboats first fired upon it. Contrary to the accounts of various Vincent's crew members, the cruiser's Aegis combat system recorded that the airliner was climbing at the time and its radio transmitter was squawking on only the Mode 3 civilian frequency, and not on the military Mode 2. Flight 655 was first detected by Vincennes immediately after takeoff when it received a short IFF Mo 2, possibly leading the crew of Vincennes to believe the airliner was an Iranian F-14 Tomcat diving into an attack profile. Since the USS Stark incident, all aircraft in the area had to monitor 121.5 MHz, the international air distress radio frequency. A total of 10 attempts were made to warn the airliner seven on the military air distress frequency, and three on the international frequency. There were no responses. At 10.24, after receiving no response to multiple radio challenges, Vincennes fired two SM-2MR surface-to-air missiles, one of which hit the airliner about 21 seconds later. The plane disintegrated immediately and crashed into the water soon after. None of the 290 passengers and crew on board survived. The cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder were never found. Disputing accounts Pentagon officials initially said Vincennes had shot down an Iranian F-14, but issued a retraction within hours and confirmed Iranian reports that the target was instead a civilian Airbus. According to the U.S. government, Vincennes mistakenly identified the airliner as an attacking military fighter and misidentified its flight profile as being similar to that of an F-14 Tomcat during an attack run, however, the cruiser's Aegis combat system recorded the plane's flight plan as climbing, not descending as in an attack run, at the time of the incident. The flight had originated at Bandar Abbas, which served both as a base for Iranian F-14 operations and as a hub for commercial flights. According to the same reports, Vincennes unsuccessfully tried to contact the approaching aircraft, seven times on the military emergency frequency and three times on the civilian emergency frequency. This civilian aircraft was not equipped to pick up military frequencies and the messages on the civilian emergency channel could have been directed at any aircraft. More confusion arose as the hailed speed was the ground speed, while the pilot's instruments displayed airspeed, a 50-knot difference. According to the Iranian government, the shoot-down was an intentionally performed and unlawful act. Even if there was a mistaken identification, which Iran never accepted, it argues that this constituted negligence and recklessness amounting to an international crime, not an accident. In particular, Iran expressed skepticism about claims of misidentification, noting that the cruiser's advanced Aegis radar correctly tracked the flight and its Mode 3 beacon. Two other U.S. warships in the area also identified the aircraft as civilian and the flight was well within a recognized international air corridor. It also noted that the crew of Vincennes were trained to handle simultaneous attacks by hundreds of enemy aircraft. Iran found it more plausible that Vincennes was jumpy and eager to fight a battle. According to Iran, 
The U.S. had previously issued a notice to airmen warning aircraft that they were at risk of defensive measures if they had not been cleared from a regional airport and if they came within five nautical miles of a warship at an altitude of less than 2,000 feet. Flight 655 had been cleared from a regional airport and was well outside those limits when it was attacked. Even if the plane had truly been an Iranian F-14, Iran argued that the U.S. would not have had the right to shoot it down, as it was flying within Iranian airspace and did not follow a path that could be considered an attack profile, nor did it illuminate Vincennes with radar. Prior to the incident, Vincennes had entered Iranian territorial waters, and was inside these waters when it launched its missiles. Even had the crew of Flight 655 made mistakes, the U.S. government would still remain responsible for the actions of Vincennes' crew, under international law. Iran also pointed out that in the past that the United States has steadfastly condemned the shooting down of aircraft, whether civil or military, by the armed forces of another state and cited El Al Flight 402, Libyan Arab Airlines Flight 114 and Korean Airlines Flight 007, among other incidents. Iran also noted that when Iraq attacked the USS Stark, the U.S. found Iraq fully responsible on the grounds that the Iraqi pilot knew or should have known he was attacking a U.S. warship. Aftermath The event sparked an intense international controversy, with Iran condemning the attack. In mid July 1988, Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Velayati asked the United Nations Security Council to condemn the United States, saying the attack could not have been a mistake and was a criminal act, a massacre, and an atrocity. George H.W. Bush, then Vice President of the United States in the Reagan administration, defended his country at the UN by arguing that the U.S. attack had been a wartime incident and the crew of Vincennes had acted appropriately to the situation. The Soviet Union asked the U.S. to withdraw from the area and supported efforts by the Security Council to end the Iran-Iraq war. Most of the remainder of the 13 delegates who spoke supported the U.S. position, saying one of the problems was that a 1987 resolution to end the Iran-Iraq war had been ignored. Following the debate, Security Council Resolution 616 was passed expressing deep distress over the U.S. attack and profound regret for the loss of human lives, and stressing the need to end the Iran-Iraq war as resolved in 1987. Inside Iran, this shootdown was perceived as a purposeful attack by United States, signaling that the U.S. was about to enter into a direct war against Iran on the side of Iraq. In August 1988, a month after the shootdown, the Iranian government released a 45 rial postage stamp illustrating the event, where the ship shooting the missile is painted with the colors of the American flag, with a map of a burning Iran in the background. The U.S. government issued notes of regret for the loss of human lives, but never formally apologized or acknowledged wrongdoing. On 5 July 1988 President Ronald Reagan expressed regret, when directly asked if he considered the statement an apology, Reagan replied, yes. The incident overshadowed Iran-United States relations for many years. The former CIO analyst Kenneth M. Pollock wrote, the shootdown of Iran Air Flight 655 was an accident, but that is not how it was seen in Tehran. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and check back for our next video.